touching on that 1990 season, I just found this out uh, yesterday when I was doing my research for this, but you were actually involved in a, uh, in a holdout leading up to that 1990 season. So uh, a lot of people think of holdouts and they think of, you know, uh, like Des Bryant this past off season, but in 1990, you know, free agency, what wasn't, uh, what it was, you know, today. And, uh, so there's all that uh, leading up to it. I know you and Lawrence Taylor were in a 1990 holdout leading up to the season. So what was that about? Like for, from your rank, could you give us some insight on that? Well, I'll tell you from, from, from Lawrence and I's perspective, uh, uh, the main thing with me was I just wanted to be compensated and paid to play the game on the level that Lawrence was. Okay. Uh, you know, I knew, I knew, and they knew, you know, what I brought to the team uh, on a weekly basis. They knew that, you know, not only as a run stopper, but as a pass rusher that, you know, they needed a talent like mine to win. Right. And, um, and I just wanted to be compensated for what I did at the same level that Lawrence was. Okay. You know, for the longest you know, I, I had to take a back seat to getting paid my money to perform like the linebackers were paid in our defense. And I just didn't think it was fair right. that I come in and I work as hard as I work in the off season and I work that hard in training camp to help my team win, prepare my team to win, and, and execute and help my team win and not be you know, awarded for it. I just, I just didn't think it was right. Okay. And, um, you know, you know, fortunately it worked out that once Lawrence and I returned to the team that we were able to, you know, get ourselves in football shape real fairly quickly and, uh, and become an impact player in our defense and help our defense make that 10 game run that we made from the start of the season, uh, through mid November. Okay, and so now when, when when people think of holdouts, now when fans uh, hear about these holdout things, you know, I, I don't think a lot of fans understand that when it comes to professional sports, when you're a player, when you're a coach, when you're a, you're an official or an executive, that in the world of pro sports, it's a business first and a game second. And a lot of fans are like, you know, people would say to you, oh, Leonard, you know, what are you doing thinking about money like that? You know, get your you-know-what on the field and get ready for this season. But um, I think I think, like, your stance is probably is probably uh, justifiable. It's it's fair because you're thinking of things on a business perspective. Hey, why am I training as hard as Lawrence Taylor and this linebacking core, and they're getting paid more than I am, and they're doing the same amount of work as I am? You know. Yes, I, and I agree with you. Uh, I, I think that for the most part, you know, fans are fans are you know they're. They're so misinformed about the entire business portion of professional football that, and that's back in that era. I think right. now the fan is a lot more educated now versus the way it was before. I think before um, that attitude existed that you just talked about. But I think now the fan now understands, you know, the player a lot better and then what could happen to that player as a result of Mm -hmm. because of all the things you've heard over the last three to five years about player injury concussion trauma uh, and everything else associated with players in the game right and so now I'm thinking about this now from like a, a, a team perspective um was Bill Parcells at any point in these holdout conversations was was he sort of a corporate guy or did he just say Leonard you deserve to be compensated whatever you feel is right you know take this up with George Young I'm gonna practice with my team on the field and then once you two get this settled you know you're welcome to come back anytime was that sort of the atmosphere or was it a little bit different no it's a lot different yeah. uh, for the most part he took it personal uh, he took it personal when a player held out mm-hmm. uh, he felt like you know uh, you know um, especially when a guy had a contract, uh, you know, and, and he didn't understand that at that time, you know, we didn't have any options. And, uh, you know, once you signed the contract, you signed the contract. Right. You couldn't go play for somebody else. No one could bid for your talent. Mm. Uh, it, it was a 
was almost like, you know, modern day slavery. I mean, uh, God, you know, they get you, they own you, uh, they own your rights. You can't go anywhere. You can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. You know, you had no reference. You had no reference. You know, and I think that that's what the guys are fighting for. And you see now what has happened as a result of guys now obtaining leverage. Right. You know, guys have a chance, you know, move freely within the system, um, have their talent evaluated by others, and earn more money for, you know, for their talent. Mm -hmm. And that's only fair. You know, unfortunately, it changes the landscape and the chemistry of the game, you know, uh, uh, for a lot of people. Then again, it makes it exciting. You know, you actually have fantasy football live in the corner. <laughs> right. Face every week. Every week. So, you know, you know, you can see a guy playing for this team this year and next year. He could be on the team you're rooting against. Exactly. Or your team you were rooting for. Right. You know, so, you know, it's a little bit crazy. But, you know, it, does, it, it was that way during that time. None of those money issues, I think, would have existed. Okay. Because, yeah, I'm thinking of what a holdout means now compared to a holdout then because, uh, you know, there, there was your holdout, Lawrence Taylor's holdout, and then with the Cowboys in, I think, 1993, they were in a famous holdout with Emmett Smith, and he missed the first two games or so. And and then you talk about people like uh, Des Bryant this past season where he has the leverage. He has, he has the option to do whatever he would please as long as the Cowboys are okay with it, saying, listen, I'm going to hold out, and if you're not going to agree to terms on the deal that I want, um, then you can trade me. But you guys didn't really have that that option or that clause back then. Now the free agency is in full I swing mean, effect. I mean, just think about what you just said. I mean, if 90% of the New York Giants pass rush was out here arguing and saying, we need to be paid more money, we'd like to be paid more money, uh-huh. You would think that the team would say, okay, well, we should pay them more money. That's Lawrence Taylor, number 56. That's Leonard Marshall, number 70. Right. They represent 90% of our pass rush uh, uh, during the course of a 16-game season. Let's pay them their money. Yeah. It's the players that we need to have on the field uh, for at least 80% of the football plays in order for us to win a game. And, and so also not, not pay them. Yeah, and, and also not to mention, um, they're using your likeness in terms of uh, posters, game programs, press releases, um, newspaper articles. So they're really shining your name up on a marquee uh, level, but you're not getting paid as as much you would think if they're you know throwing your name out there like you're the greatest thing ever. Absolutely, right. and that was the, that was the issue. I mean, you got a guy who's the face of the franchise, and you got another guy who's an up and coming face of the franchise. Uh, or a franchise type player that you know you need you know you need to take care of, but yet you know he's forcing your hand to make that decision. I shouldn't have had to do that. It should have just been you know let's pay the guy his money. Let's get beyond the BS. He's got good representation. Uh, we know the type of player he is. He's here every off season. Mm. He's busted his behind in our off season program. You know, he's a leader in our program. Let's just pay the guy the money he wants. He's an extremely talented guy. Let's pay him. Right. Well, that didn't happen. That didn't happen. And and, and that, right there in itself, is, is, is what I think caused a lot of the issues between, you know, Lawrence and I as players and the organization. Mm-hmm. 